Chapter 4 And all that was needed now, she thought, as she lay that night in bed listening to the constant gurgle in the pipes of the constant H and C, was for old Tom to tell her everything in fullest detail, as Arietti must have told it to him. And, having gone so far, he might do this, she felt, in spite of his fear of things being put down in writing. And she wouldn't tell, either. She resolved staunchly, at any rate not during his lifetime, although why he should mind so much she couldn't understand, seeing that he was already known as the biggest liar in five counties. But what seemed still more hopeful was that, having shown her the little book, he had not asked for it back. She had it now in bed with her. Stuffed beneath her pillow. And this, at any rate, was full of things in writing. Not that she could understand them quite. The entries were too short, little headings they seemed like, jotted down by Arietti to remind herself of dates. But some of them sounded extraordinarily weird and mysterious. Yes, she decided, suddenly inspired. That was the way to work it. She would ask old Tom to explain the headings. What could Arietti have meant, she would ask, by Mother Saved? And this, more or less, was what did happen. While Mrs May talked business each day with Messrs Jobson, Thring, the Gwyn, the Gwyd, or argued with builders and plumbers and plumbers' mates, Kate would wander off alone across the fields and find her way to the cottage, seeking out old Tom. On some days, as Kate in later years would explain to her children, he would seem a bit cagey and uninterested, but on other days, a particular heading in the diary would seem to inspire him and his imagination would take wings and sail away on such swirls and eddies of miraculous memory that Kate, spellbound, could hardly believe that he had not, at some point, in some other life, perhaps, been a borrower himself. And Mrs May, Kate remembered, had once said just this of her younger brother. This brother who, although three years his junior, had been known to old Tom, old Tom himself had had admitted this much, Had they been friends? Great friends, perhaps. They certainly seemed birds of a feather, one famous for telling tall stories because he was such a tease, the other more simply described as the biggest liar in five counties. And it was this thought which, long after she was grown up, decided Kate to tell the world what was said to have happened to Pod and Homily and Little Arietti after that dreadful day when, Smoked out of their house under the kitchen, they sought for refuge in the wild outdoors. Here is her story, all put down in writing. We can sift the evidence ourselves.